Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. In United Church, we're so grateful to be together, whether you're in the building or you're online. Welcome to United <laughs> Church. Thanks for being here. My name is Adam, this is my wife, Leslie, Leslie and we have the privilege of being part of the team at United Amen. Church. Anyway, before, before we got going, I just thought, it's been a while since we just shared some information with yeah. you guys. Just, news. just some, some, <laughs> some news, some updates. Also, just to remind you of who we are and who God's called us to be. We're called to love God and unite people. Amen. As a matter of fact, when we went to start our church five years ago, God, <laughs> God, almost five years ago, God really put in our hearts a strategic mission to have three campuses in the Forest Hill Corridor three campuses in the Forest Hill Corridor. And right now we're standing in the first of those three. We're at 11201 West Huguenot Road. And this is kind of the Bon Air section yeah. of, of Richmond. And yeah. our family does life here and we love the Forest Hill Corridor. So somewhere up here, Robius Huguenot, going all the way down Forest Hill, right into yeah. the bottom of the city, right into the bottom of the city, down Manchester area. Our hope is to start here to get the resources that God has for us here so we could stretch out because as we go further down the corridor, the economy totally changes. The economy totally changes. As a matter of fact, if you're driving this way, I know I'm taking a lot of time, <laughs> but if you're, drive, if you're driving this way from Manchester and the James River's on your right hand side, the average median income is about $140,000. When you cross the street, come on somebody, yeah, literally cross the street, the income drops over $100,000. It's yeah. a super diverse community. There's Richmond Public Schools all up and down the Forest Hill Corridor. And we believe that God has called Amen. us to this area of Richmond to make a difference. Yeah. Are we for all of Richmond? That's right. Yes, we we're for all of Richmond. We love all of Richmond, but our strategic focus is this Forest Hill Corridor area. Yeah. So we just encourage you, if you've been wor worshiping for a while, mm -hmm. if you love this church, Consider partnering with us, whatever that looks like. We get, we're gonna have serve days coming up, various things that we're gonna be doing in the community. As a matter of fact, we've kind of gotten notorious for buying groceries for families. Yeah. We, we, la last time we did it, we provided 200 groceries uh, free groceries, 200 free bags of groceries yeah. for families. Yeah. And it was just a blessing. They pull up and we ask them if we could pray for them. We could, uh, we ask them if we could connect with them yeah. and give them a free Bible, give them free merch, give them free stuff, just bless them in the name of the Lord mm -hmm. and send them back on their way. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing when you partner with purpose. Come on, That's somebody. Right. It's a beautiful thing when you partner with purpose. I just wanted to share that with you yeah. real quick. Yeah, Come on, tell us, what's co <laughs> tell us what's coming up over the next month. So one of the biggest community outreaches that we will be doing this year, we did it last year and it was a hit unbeknownst to us. We had no idea. Thousands of people came. We had, we had o came. over a thousand people Yeah, came. over a thousand people came, but we will be hosting Trunk or Treat. Come on, a very family-friendly experience for you guys to bring your kids on through with their costumes. It'll be outdoors. They'll get to see fun cars, decorated different themes, and get handed candy and treats and toys and whatever. And, and Bible and stuff <laughs> it's a great it's really a great alternative like most people yeah. are figuring out what to do around the Halloween season and a lot of people well that's demonic I don't want to get involved yeah. in any of that stuff <laughs> we don't do anything scary no. we don't do anything spooky yeah. nothing like that at all it's just a fa family friendly event yeah. where we actually shit talk about Jesus to people we let people know that we're a church and that yeah. and that God changed our lives and God saved us so it's a great great godly alternative yeah. to do something and that's happening october 30th saturday october 30th What's the time? and we are starting at four o'clock so that it's easy for our families with young ones to come out it's still daylight and we'll go into the early evening hours so come on out make those plans and hey if you are part of our church and you want to give towards that we need candy We'll, we need the money. If you can't go shopping, send us some money and say, yeah. hey, this is for a candy donation. Yeah. Um, you could go to our, our secure online mm -hmm. giving portal and click on Trunk or Treat, yeah. and you could give that way. So yeah. it's a great opportunity for us to be a blessing. It's a great opportunity for us to evangelize, mm -hmm. for us to uh, promote God's church in the community, and we're super excited about it. And small groups. And small groups. So yes. we kicked off small groups last week, and it was phenomenal. What an amazing, yeah. amazing time we had. I heard the ladies killed it, heart and soul, meeting every Tuesday for the next eight weeks from what time in the building? 
so from 7 o'clock, and we are done by 8.30 to honor your time and get you home to get ready for the next day. Mm -hmm. Hey, but we just introduced it uh, this past Tuesday, so there is still time. Please join us. We will be meeting every week. Yeah, come you, on, There's somebody. still time yeah, there's to still come time. And, and join. And then on Wednesday, we started... Um, uh, just a, a whole church-wide um, yeah, so uh, small group called Steps to Freedom. Pastor Dale O'Shield wrote, wrote an amazing book called mm -hmm. Steps to Freedom. And uh, we're going through the book together. And yeah. we're talking about things like facing your bondage and finding mm -hmm. true freedom yes. and, and relinquishing control yes. to God. So good. It's a lot of stuff that a lot of people struggle with. And our heart is that it would be a commitment, an eight-week commitment. If you missed the first one, we'll we'll give you the makeup notes for yeah, it. Yeah. But don't let it stop you from coming to That's the next right. one. Come on. Come on, somebody. Make make the next seven weeks a priority to be there. And, and I promise you will be blessed. It's Wednesday night. Same yeah. thing from about 7 to 8.30 p.m. We're, we're, we're sticking to the timeline. We're give, actually ending a couple minutes early to give people mm -hmm. a chance to fellowship a little and get yeah. going. Yeah. Secondly, and, and lastly, for right now, the last thing I wanted to talk about was um, Vision Sunday, our Vision mm -hmm. Sunday. If you want to hear more about the mission and vision of United Church, what God has brought us through over the last couple years. Come on, somebody. We didn't even meet for almost 18 months That's during right. COVID. We didn't have a, a house a place of worship. We were meeting in people's houses, doing various things. Yeah. And look at God now. Amen. Come on, somebody. Look Amen. what God has done now. So Vision Sunday is going to be the first Sunday mm -hmm. in November. November. And then the second Sunday is going to be the big kickoff to our mm -hmm. annual giving. We have an annual end of year big give that we call yep. our vision offering. And yep. that is our offering that propels us into the next season of all that God has for us. It pushes us into the next season so we could do things like get other campuses. So it, it, it helps us do things like hire more staff. It yeah. helps us do things like be more generous in the community to yeah. people that are in need. So we're excited. So that's going to be the first two Sundays in November. Yeah. And then we kick off what we, what we consider maybe one of our favorite things that we do at United Church at the movies. Come on, somebody. It's going to be awesome. So much fun. We're excited Write for all, all that God is doing. Write it all down <laughs> on your calendar. You don't want to miss any of this. This is the best time to get plugged into church. The, the days are getting darker earlier. There's, there's not much to do in the evening. That's good. Come on, somebody. Yeah. There's not much to do. So come to church and get plugged in. Come to church and get plugged in. We love you guys. We have a great word, great time of worship. You want to pray for us and we'll get yeah. going. Well, Father, we thank you for this time. We give it all to you. We dedicate this day to you, Lord God. Be in our homes, be uh, in our workplaces, in our minds, Lord God, with our family. In Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We love you. Let's get ready to worship. Thank you, Lord. Spirits and rushing wind Fire of God for within Holy Ghost Breathe on us, we pray As we repair and turn from sin Revival every smoldering Breath of God Fan us into flame You sing We need a fresh wind the fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, hallelujah.
prophesying and asking God for? Why don't you open up your mouth, church, lift up in your hands? We have a God who does not withhold, but He pours out His Spirit to those who are willing and wanting. And if you don't know what to sing, sing His name, Jesus, the precious, mighty name. Thanks for joining us, United Church. Super excited to be here today. Come on, somebody. Super excited to be together in the house of the Lord. Thank you for tuning in wherever you're watching from, whenever you're watching this. We just want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, a lot of time and a lot of energy goes into these services. So you participating and you watching and taking notes and doing all the things that we talk about really, really makes this all worthwhile. We wanna advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. We wanna share the good news, and today, we're kicking off a new series, uh, a new series in the month of October called 
guided into the future, guided into the future. And we had a conversation as we were going through the book of James a couple weeks ago, and I made a comment about God not wanting us to worry. And uh, the response to that comment was just completely overwhelming. A lot of people wanted to know more, why? I, what did you mean by that? Explain it. Can we go a little bit deeper? So today, I thought we'd kick off by doing something very, very, very practical. And it's going to be two things. Number one, going to a popular passage of scripture that was written um, talking all about worry and anxiety and some different things. And then we're going to go straight to the words of Jesus. Come on, somebody. We're going to go straight to the words of Jesus and see what Jesus himself had to say about worry. Um, if you have your Bibles, uh, open up to Psalm 23 or power them on, whatever you do. Or if you don't, it's going to be up on the screen there. Psalm 23, and we're going to read verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows, meaning he brings me peace. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Father God, we're so thankful for your word, and we ask, Lord, that for the next couple of minutes as we speak together and as we meditate on your word, Lord God, that you would do something in our hearts, that you would do something in our minds, that you would do something in our lives, Lord God, something so profound that only you can do. We ask that you would show out in our lives this day. We love you. We're thankful for you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. So we have this famous passage of scripture in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Let's just for the next couple of minutes, just take a look at what a shepherd does or who a shepherd is. Really, a shepherd does three things. Um, sheep are not the brightest animals in the world. Come on, somebody. So they need a lot of care. Sounds familiar, right? They need a lot of care. They need a lot of provision. They need a lot of guidance. They need a lot of support. They need a lot of sustenance. And really, at the end of the day, a shepherd's responsible for three things. And I want you to drop this in the comments below. Write this in your notes. If you're watching online, a shepherd feeds, a shepherd leads, and a shepherd meets needs. A shepherd feeds, a shepherd leads, and a shepherd meets needs. Parents, moms, dads, dads, you're, you're a shepherd. You're, you're a shepherd in your house. You're called to feed, you're called to lead, and you're called to meet needs. Moms, you're, you're a shepherd in your house. You're a shepherd to your children. Moms are called to, to feed, lead, and meet needs. Business leaders, maybe you don't have physical children, but you're a business owner, a godly man or woman that's a business owner. You're called to feed, lead, and meet needs. It's exactly who Jesus said we were supposed to be. As a matter of fact, the Greek word for pastor, the Greek word for shepherd is pastor. Come on, somebody. The Greek word for shepherd is pastor. And there's a couple of things that I just want you to take away from this Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. That means he's going to feed, he's going to lead, and he's going to meet my needs. I want you to say that with me. He's going to, he's going to feed, he's going to lead, and he's going to meet all my needs. I want you to understand a couple of things out of this passage here in Psalm 23. Number one, the first thing I want you to write down is God is the source of everything I need to live. Why should I worry? Why should I be afraid? God is the source of everything I need to live. Listen to what this passage of scripture says. The Lord is my shepherd I have all that I need. Come on, somebody. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. God is the source of everything that I would ever need to live. Why should you worry? If God's not worried, if Jesus is not worried, why should you 
worry. 1 Corinthians 8, verse 6. Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, who is the source. I want you to drop that in the comments below. Who is the source of all things. And we exist for him. One Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom um, all things that have been created and we, believers, exist and have life and have been redeemed through. He's saying, God the Father is the source. Everything else in my life is a resource that should flow through the source. God is the source of my life. He, he gives me all that, I have all that I need because he is my shepherd. He's my provider. He's going to feed He's going to lead and he's going to meet my needs. He lets me rest in green meadows, meaning he brings peace. He lets me rest. I don't do it on my own. It's not something I'm fully in control of. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me besides peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths. It, we're going through the list of things that God supports us in, that Jesus Christ supports us in. Why should I worry when God is the source of everything I need to live? Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 says, If you start thinking to yourselves, I did all this, and all by myself, I'm rich, it's all mine. Well, think again. Come on, somebody. Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all the wealth so as to confirm the covenant that he promised to your ancestors as it is today. If you would think to yourself, I did all this and all by myself, I'm rich, it's all mine, well think again. Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all this wealth. God is my lifeline. Somebody drop that in the comments below. God is my lifeline. If God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, if God is the creator of heaven and earth, why should I worry? Why should I be afraid? Here's the second thing I want you to write down out of Psalm 23. There is nothing that I need that God cannot supply. Somebody drop that in the comments below just to repeat it. I know it's on the screen, but drop it in the comments just to repeat it, there is nothing that I need that God cannot supply. Come on, somebody. Philippians 4.19, my God will meet your every need out of his riches in the glory that is found in Christ Jesus. My God will meet your every need. Come on, somebody. It's not saying my God will let you scrounge to get by. My God will let you struggle and my God will let you worry and be fearful about provision, about things that you might need. My God will meet your every need out of his riches in the glory in, in the glory that is found in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching to you, but I'm also preaching to myself. I struggle with all this stuff just like anybody else does. How are we going to get the resources to finish the building? Are we going to be able to, to pay all our bills and take care of everything? What about our staff and people that we're responsible for? My God will meet your every need out of his glorious riches that are found in Christ Jesus. Or how about this? First Chronicles 29, 14. But who am I? And who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you. And we give you only what you gave us first. God's goodness, I want somebody to drop this in the comments below. God's goodness is not based on your goodness. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus, that God's goodness is, is not based on your goodness. As a matter of fact, God's love is not based on you. God's love is placed on you. It's something 
that he chose for you. He's sought you out. He's been seeking you out. You know it. Come on, somebody. You've been feeling the the push inside of you to be more spiritual. You've been feeling the push inside of you to get closer to God. And every every time you start making progress, every time you start moving forward, the enemy is going to sidetrack you. And I want you to know that's because Satan is scared of you. Come on, somebody. The devil is scared of you. He knows that if you only started walking in the full of all that God had for you, you would be a world changer. He knows that if you start walking in the fullness and your faith is unleashed, you will become unstoppable. And I just want to tell you this morning that God's goodness is not based on your goodness. God's goodness is based on who he is. Who he is. Here's the third thing I wrote down. God, and I want everybody to say this with me, God doesn't want me to worry about anything. God doesn't want me to worry about anything. Pastor Adam, now I see where you're going with this whole thing. Guided into the future. We're guided by our great shepherd. We're guided by our heavenly father into the future. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. I'm not going to worry about anything that hasn't happened yet. I'm going to put my hope and my trust in Jesus Christ. God doesn't want me to worry about anything. Philippians 4 verse 6. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. Here's what I'm saying. You can pray or you can panic, but you can't do both. You can pray or you can panic, but you can't do both. Here's another way to put it. You can worship or you can worry, but you can't do both. You can worship or you could worry, but you can't do both. Jesus taught us such a profound lesson that most people have missed their their entire Christian career. They've taken it for granted. They've not applied it to their life. Jesus most prolific message, his Sermon on the Mount, he he actually gives us reasons why our worry is worthless. Come on, somebody. Today, I'm just going to give you a couple of those points. We're going to stretch this out over the next over the next 30 days or so, the next couple weeks here in the month of October. Number one, I want you to write this down. This is from the Sermon on the Mount. So we start in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, not my boss. Come on, somebody, not my, the, not my boss and my job. He doesn't dictate my life. He doesn't dictate the quality of my life. He doesn't dictate the way of my life. If you're a boss and you're watching this, I'm sorry, but, but it, 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 it's true. So we get wrapped up in all that, right? We think that our, our work is our calling and we get wrapped up with it and we move and flow dependent on how those things react in our lives. When if we just put our hope and our trust saying to ourselves, the Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. Going down line by line, the promises of God. I promise you, even in moments of anxiety, even in moments of worry and fear, if you would only recite this over and over to yourself and meditate on it, it's a key to helping you not worry. Let's go, somebody. A key to helping you not Worry. So here's the first thing that Jesus tells us from his sermon on the mound. Now that we understand that the Lord is our shepherd, we have everything we need. Now we take the words of God in, with skin on, right? God in flesh, Jesus, who came to earth to talk us through, through life, to talk us through the things that we would experience. Jesus' conversations were actually more about stuff and money than it was about sin or Satan. Come on, somebody. Jesus actually spoke more about stuff and money than he did sin or Satan. Why? Because he knew that would be the biggest vibe for our time, our energy, and our life would be getting hung up in stuff. So here's the first thing that Jesus says. And it's Matthew 6. I'm going to read a couple of verses of Matthew 6. This is why I tell you never to be worried about your life. Come on, somebody. Jesus, talk to me, Jesus. Come on, somebody. This is why I tell you to never be worried about your life. For all that you need will be provided. This is the words of Jesus. These are not my words. 
All you need will be provided, such as food, water, clothing, everything your body needs. Isn't there more to your life than a meal? Isn't your body more than clothing? This is the clothing. This is what Jesus is telling us. The first point, I, I, want, I want us all to write this down. I want us all to get this. Worry is unreasonable. This is what Jesus is saying. Worry, your worry is unreasonable. This is why I tell you to never be worried about your life for all that you need will be provided. If you're a Christ follower, if you're a, a son or daughter of the almighty God, you should not worry about anything. Come on, somebody. You shouldn't worry. As a matter of fact, worry for the believer is unreasonable. Worry is unreasonable. Usually we worry about the wrong things. We worry about things exter eternal. We should worry about things eternal, not external. Come on, somebody. We should worry about things eternal and not external. Here's another thought I had. If you can't change it, why are you worried about it? If you can change it, then stop worrying and change it. Come on, somebody. If you can't change it, why are you worried about it? And if you can change it, then stop worrying and change it. Anytime you worry about something, it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger in your mind. Just think about that. Anytime you fixate on it, anytime you focus on it, anytime you worry about it, it just continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger in your mind. It's not logical. It's irrational when you think about that. Something that's not even happening right now, something that's for, far or off in the future, I'm making it a big deal in my mind, in my body right now. It hasn't even happened yet. And the more I'm consumed about thinking about it, the bigger and bigger it's getting in my life. The bigger and bigger it's getting in my mind. It's actually becoming an idol. I'm actually worshiping something other than God. I'm, wor I'm worshiping my worry. I'm worshiping my worry. My worry has taken the seat, taken the throne of God in my life in this moment. Worry is irrational. Come on, somebody. Worry is unreasonable. It's just completely unreasonable. It's why Jesus said, never be worried about your life for all that you need will be provided for you. This is the second thing that I wrote down here. Jesus said not to worry because it's unnatural. Jesus says not to worry because it's unnatural. Listen to what he says. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying, add a single hour to your life. Matthew 6, 26, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field, they do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. This is amazing passage of scripture to me. It's an amazing word that we're finding here that Jesus is saying, worry is unnatural. There's no reason for you to be worried about anything in your life. He, this is what he says by making this illustration about the birds of the air, by making an illustration about the flowers of the field. Jesus has given us a, a major science lesson. Come on, somebody. A major, you never knew that your Jesus was a scientist. Let's go. Yet, well, don't get that confused with Christian scientists and all this kind of stuff. With Pastor Adam, what are you talking about? It's not making any sense. Jesus says nature doesn't worry. Nature doesn't worry. It's unnatural. By saying the birds, by saying the flowers, he's saying nature doesn't worry. It's unnatural. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I want to help you understand something that human beings are the only creatures created that worry. Human beings are the only created creature that worries. 
Nature in itself does not worry. Nature has seasons and months and and, 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 and different environments, right? We go through the fall and we go through the spring and I, you, you never see your, gra- your grass not getting out of bed because it's having a, it's having a panic attack because I don't know if I'm going to be able to grow this year. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sprout up this year. I've never seen any of my trees knock on my door and say, hey, bro, I'm, I just, I'm really tired. I'm really, I'm burnt out. I just, can I lay down on your couch? I've never seen it because it doesn't happen. We're the only We're the only created, the human beings are the only creatures that worry in rebellion against God. You weren't made to worry. You were not made to worry. As a matter of fact, Jesus is saying that if you do worry, worry is rebellion against God. Why are you trying to take into your own hands what you should be allowing your heavenly father to take care of? Why should you be focused on the things that you have no control over, that God is controlling for your lives? I I love this verse, and I I don't know if you've ever really looked at the intricacy of some flowers. I, I always took flowers for granted. I was a kid growing up in New York City. We had a concrete backyard. Come on, somebody. Didn't have to mow a lawn, nothing like that. We had a lot of concrete everywhere. And I was just never familiar with flowers until we moved here to Richmond. And I remember Leslie and I going on a date and just spending time at, at the garden, at, the, at the, the gardens over at Maymont Park and just walking through and the beautiful colors all over the place and the beautiful smells and the, the bees, come on, that, that know how to get out of those beautiful flowers what God had intended for them to get all along. It's the same thing for your life. It's the same thing for your life. The intricacy of the inside of a flower, what it looks like, and the beauty of it. He's saying Solomon in all his splendor was not dressed up as well as one of those, so why should you worry? Then he goes on to talk about birds. If anybody's on God's welfare plan, it's birds. Come on, somebody. They do not contribute anything, really. I mean, besides chickens, I love some chicken, maybe hens, I don't know, whatever, whatever you like to cook and eat. But the average bird, I've never heard anybody say, hey, I'm going to go shoot that pigeon and cook it and eat it. I, I think people do it probably someplace, but you ain't doing it with me. Come on, somebody, let's go. Them things are flying rats. <laughs> but this is what he's saying. He's saying if anything is on God's welfare plan in the universe, it's birds. They just tweet and poop. Come on, somebody. I bet you do that too. Nothing in creation worries except humans. Nothing in creation worries except humans. This is what God is telling us. This is what the Lord wants us to hear. And this is what I'd love for you to walk away from this first session with. He's saying, I I, I want you to calm down. I want you to to just breathe and really trust me. Like you say you trust me, but you're so consumed with your own life. You say you trust me, but the minute something in your life happens, it wraps you up, it wraps you up in knots and you don't know what to do or how to act. Worry is completely unreasonable. Worry is completely unreasonable. Luke chapter 12, verses 25 and 26. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this little, this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Trouble today, today's trouble is enough for today. The emotion of worry is driven by the things that we are devoted to. The emotions of worry, I want you to drop this in the comments below. The emotions um, of worry, the emotion of worry is driven by the things that we are devoted to. What are you most devoted to? If you're not sure, track your worries. Come on, somebody. If you're not sure, you need to track your worries because your worries often lead you to the point of your greatest devotion. So if your biggest worry, if your biggest worry is money, if your biggest worry is stuff, 
If your biggest worry is popularity, if your biggest worry is how many people know your name and know who you are, if your biggest worry is the car that you ride in, if your biggest worry is the house that you live in, what are you devoted to? I ask God day by day to free me from all worry. I need him for this. And here's what I choose to do. I do what's possible for me to do. I turn to him and do what I can concerning my situation. I do what's possible for me to do. I turn to God and I do what I can concerning my situation. Then I release the impossible into God's hands. What I cannot do, humanly speaking, I don't worry about. What I cannot do, humanly speaking, I I cannot worry about. You're saying, well, PA, what happens if there's this massive thing in your life that has nothing to do with worry? What happens if there's a sickness? What happens if there's, there's, there's a sick body or a sick ailment? Let me tell you a story. In 1996, my father was diagnosed with, with cancer, leukemia. And he was sick. I mean, really, really sick. And we were worried. As a family, we were worried. We had never experienced anything like this before. We had never gone through anything like this before. And we didn't know what to do, but we knew that there was something that we could do, and we gave it to God in prayer. We gave it to God in prayer. Practically speaking, he went to the doctors, and he started uh, seeing a physician, and they started caring for him in alignment to his sickness to try to get him healthy. And we prayed. We put the rest in God's hands, and we trusted him, saying, God, there's only so much doctors can do. There's only so much that we can do. We, we can't worry about this. We can't freak out about it. All we could do is entrust it to your hands and pray. And I'll tell you this, something very unusual happened Um, And probably about a year and a half later, they couldn't find an ounce of cancer in my father's body. They could not find a drop of cancer in his body. You see, we, we found out later on that the cancer went into remission to a point where he had, they, they, they went from months to live to a few years to live. During that time, our relationship was restored. During that time, my father and I became best friends. And I remember talking to my dad about things like, hey dad, if I, when I go to get married, I, I'd love for you to be my best man. And, and I remember the whole conversation, like, don't you want me to marry you? And I said, no, dad, I want somebody else to marry us. I want you to be standing right next to me. A couple of years later in 2000, um, it was around February. I'll never forget my birthday is the end of January and me and my dad were wrestling on the floor. And he said, son, no matter how big you get, no matter how old you get, you'll never be able to whip your old man. And I love that because I'm the same way with my kids to this day. But it was maybe two or three days later that he began to get sick. And he went into the hospital on a Monday and by Wednesday he was dead. I'm saying, Pastor Adam, that doesn't, that doesn't sound, I, I wasn't worried. You see, God, chose to heal my dad while he was on earth. He healed his body while he was on earth and gave us years to get our relationship right, gave us years to, to, to love on, on my mom and, and speak into my mom's life and give her the courage to go on once he was passed. God, God chose to step in and do the miraculous, do what only he could do, and he healed my father here on earth. But then he chose to heal my dad in a way that he would never be sick again. He brought him home. He brought him home. I, I want to encourage you today. I don't know what you worry with. I don't know what you, sh- you struggle with. But I want you to know that we have a great shepherd and you are guided into the future. You're not just walking, bumping into walls. If you really put Christ first in your life, all these things will be added unto you. If you want to draw close to God this morning, it's real simple. We just pray together. It's, prayer is the language between us and God. It's our way, form of communication. We pray and we speak to God. And you might be saying, I've never prayed before. I don't know what to say. I'm going to pray with you. I just want you to repeat after me. Mean it with all your heart and then take a next step once we're done. 
praying? What does the next step look like? A next step for me would look like just reaching out to us, filling out a connection card. If you're on Facebook, if you're on church.online, no matter how you're watching this, there's connection cards, there's prayer cards, there's ways that you can get into contact with us that we can send you resources for next steps. Things like free bi a, fr a free Bible, things like different curriculums that'll help you uh, strengthen your relationship with Jesus Christ once you ask him into your heart. So come on, let's do that together right now. If you're far from God and you're saying, I wanna come home today, today's your chance to come home. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, today is your first step. Pray with me something like this. Lord, we thank you. We love you, Lord God. We ask that you would forgive us of our sin, that you would cleanse our hearts and our minds of all unrighteousness, that today would be the start of a new life in you. Lord, we renounce worry to you, Lord God. We lay it at your feet, Lord Jesus. Keep us from that sin of rebellion. Keep us, Lord God, from that sin of idolatry, making that we would make anything bigger than you, Lord God, because guess what? There's nothing bigger than you. We say that we love you, Lord God. We're thankful. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, we love you guys. We're for you. Please take a next step. Don't go anywhere. Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repair well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, whether you were in person or online. We are so grateful that you were here. We are going to continue to worship now with our giving. Yeah, your giving is super, super important to the life of this ministry. Yeah. It's what help keep, keeps the lights on. Come on, somebody. It's yeah. what helps us to be able to be a generous church. And I made the announcement a couple weeks ago. But we're planning as we move forward the next couple of months to do things like Serve Saturdays, to pick yeah. one Saturday a month that we're out serving in the community, whether it's doing things like we've done in the past, mm -hmm. groceries for 100 families, 200 families, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. It's your generosity that makes those things important. And we really felt in our spirit mm -hmm. like Jesus was calling us to be, to be more missionally engaged in this yeah. next season than ever. So we're super excited about things like that and things like putting on parties for the community yeah. and just yeah. doing the best that we can in this facility. You know, uh, there's still work to be done. Lots, Lots of work to be done. There's <laughs> still so much time on the clock and God wants you to be part of this amazing story. Your giving makes a difference. It matters. Your giving <laughs> matters a lot and it helps us yes. advance the cause of Jesus here in this community. So we're gonna to continue to worship, whether you're in, in the building or in person, there'll be a brother in the back with a bucket. There's also the share box that's on the wall outside, or if you're online, you can just go, go ahead to our secure giving link yeah. and you can choose different funds to give, give to, yeah. or you could send a, a good old check or whatever you want into Snail our mail. PO box, <laughs> PO box 13050, Richmond, Virginia 23225. We love you guys. God is for us. You're dismissed. Before we go, Pastor Leslie is going to pray for us. Thank you. Oh, Lord, we thank you for today, and we thank you for this offering. I pray, Lord God, that as we give by faith, you would grow our faith even more. And so we ask that you would bless these, these monies and that it would stretch and grow for your glory, for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. We love you guys. God is for us. Our, our mission's never been simpler. Yeah. We're called to love God, love God and unite, unite people, people because we're all better united. united. Let's go. Come on, somebody. <laughs> we'll see you next week. God bless you. Have a great Bring week. somebody with you, whether you're in person or online. Bring people. Love you.